Welcome to my channel, I'm Scott, and in this video I am going to walk you through the process of valuing Tetra technology stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. Tetra Technologies is an oil and gas services company. The company is headquartered in the Woodlands, Texas and was founded in 1981. It went public in 1990 and trades on the New York Stock Exchange and Deutsche Börse. It is focused on completion fluids, water management, frac flowback, production well testing, and offshore rig cooling. Completion fluids are used in a well in order to prepare it for production of oil and gas. Frac flowback is the recovery of fluid used in the high pressure hydraulic fracturing process to stimulate oil or gas production in a well. This company supports oil and gas companies. So Tetra's success is highly correlated to the number of oil and gas operators in the market. Let's get started with the model. This is a small cap company, 448 million market cap. They're trading at 354 a share and they have 127 million shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So you can see they have negative free cash flow in 2018 and 19, but positive in 2020 and it's trailing 12 months. Net income is the profit and loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. That's negative each year except in the trailing 12 months. Revenue is a sales for the company and that's been slipping from 560 million down to 322 million. This is the company's income statement. I pulled it from Yahoo Finance, but for some reason their revenue is off for 2018 and 2019. I pulled this top chart from their annual report and this is their actual revenue. So 2020 was correct in Yahoo Finance but 2019 should be about half what it is. Same thing for 2018. So still their revenue dropped a lot from 2019, 561 million down to 378 million in 2020. The reason for their drop in revenue from 19 to 20 was due to a decline in oil prices associated with COVID-19. This bottom picture is also from their annual report. Yahoo Finance's gross profit is also off. So we'll just focus on everything below that. Their operating income was negative every year except in 2018. They were paying a lot of interest on their debt, over $70 million in 2018 and 19. That dropped to $18 million in 2020 and the trailing 12 months. Below that is other income and expenses. And if it's positive, that's usually the gain from the sale of an asset. If it's negative, that's usually from an asset impairment. And the bottom line of the income statement is their net income, which was negative every year, positive in the trailing 12 months. This is the company's statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. That's how much cash the company generates from its operational business. You could think of operating cash flow as net income converted to cash because net income is your accounting profit and loss. It's not actual cash. So you can see they do generate positive operating cash flow even though they had negative net income most years because companies pass through a lot of non-cash losses onto the income statement that drags down their net income, but it doesn't affect their cash flow. So that's a good sign that they're generating positive operating cash flow. Then you have capital expenditures, which are investments in property, plant, and equipment. They invested a lot in CapEx in 2018, 142 million. They invested 108 million in 2019. Sometimes companies invest in CapEx because their current equipment breaks down or becomes obsolete. Other times companies take on new projects and need more equipment or different equipment than they currently have. Either way, when a company invests in CapEx and the result is negative free cash flow, as you can see in 2018 and 19, that's not necessarily a bad thing. The investment in your company will ideally result in more revenue and free cash flow in future years. And they did have positive free cash flow in 2020 and the trailing 12 months. In 2018, they issued $770 million of debt, paid down $580 million. So they added about $200 million of debt that year, mainly because they had negative $100 million of free cash flow. But after 2018, they didn't really add much debt, a little bit in 2019, and they paid down about $10 million in 2020. 
Let's look at the capital structure. $100 million of equity, $200 million of debt. They're 33% equity, 67% debt. Their net debt is 153 million and their WAC is 10.33%. And that's a discount rate we're gonna to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four. That's $1 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $857 million. We divide that by 127 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of 677. They're trading at 354, so they're trading at a 48% discount. It's a strong buy according to the model. Simply Wall Street is even higher than me. They're at 863 a share. They're saying the stock is even more undervalued. This top chart is a stock price since it started trading. It looks like it was flat for about 13, 14 years. And then it was really driven up past $30 in around 2004, 2005. Then it came crashing down in about a year, year and a half. It came up a little bit and it's been coming down ever since. This chart is a stock price in the past year. So it looks like the stock has done really well if you bought it a year ago. They have a really high beta, 3.21. So the stock moves about three times the market. It's very volatile. The stock price went up 832% in the past 52 weeks while the S&P 500 went up 39%. The 52 week low went all the way down to 33 cents. That's really low. And the 52 week high was 371. The stock is trading well above its 50 day and 200 day moving average. So it seems to be an uptrend. About 2 million shares are traded each day on this stock. Of the 127 million shares outstanding, 120 million are on float. 53% are held by institutions and 1.3% of the shares are shorted. In the past year, this stock has done really well, up 879%, while its industry is up 86%, the market is up 48%. But in the past three years, this stock is down 17%. Its industry even worse, down 47%, while the market is up 61%. In the past five years, this stock is down 34%, its industry is down 44%, and the market up 121%. In the past five years, their annual earnings increased 36%, its industry increased 1%, and the market 12%. Last year, their earnings increased almost 100%, its industry 24%, and the market 20%. If you invested $10,000 into this company 10 years ago, you'd be at $2,900 today. That's a 71% total loss, 11.5% annual loss. So this stock has gotten crushed the past 10 years. But I think it's at a really low point. You could get a really good return if you buy it now at the low. The biggest shareholders, Fuller and Thaler at 6.4%, then Vanguard, T. Rowe Price, another company at 2.8%, then Uber Capital at 2.3%. Let's look at their financial ratios. The average PE in the market is 33, the median is 22. PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. They're at 7.6, so investors are paying $7.60 for $1 of earnings. That's a really good P.E. ratio. Price to sales is 1.4, also another good ratio. Their price to book is 4.3. That's between the market median and average. And price to book is stock price over book value per share. To calculate book value per share, that's equity over shares outstanding. Equity is assets minus liabilities on the balance sheet, and they have $103 million of equity. 63 million of tangible equity because they have 40 million dollars of intangible assets on their balance sheet their return on invested capital is negative so is their interest coverage ratio they have a really high roe at 57 percent and they have a high current ratio at 2.5 so they can cover their current liabilities two and a half times with their current assets and their current assets are 54 million of cash 62 million of receivables and 74 million of inventory they do seem to be well capitalized. They had $37 million of free cash flow and $122 million of working capital. So they have $159 million of funding. So it does not appear they're going to need more debt financing to get through the next 12 months. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to companies in the same industry. I've done videos of five other companies in the same industry as Tetra. And if Tetra has a number in blue, they're better than the average. If they have a number in red, they're worse than the average. So they're a lot better in PE, they're a little worse in price to sales, a lot worse in price to book, they have a high current ratio higher than average, 
and they have a positive ROE. The average is negative in this industry because most of these companies have negative earnings. They are higher in debt than average. They're two thirds debt, average is 44%. And they're a really small company. Actually, most companies on this list are pretty small, except Halliburton, and they don't pay a dividend. A few companies in this industry do still pay a dividend. So to summarize, I have them trading at a 48% discount. I think this stock is ripe for the picking. They do an important job supporting oil and gas companies. And no matter what people think, oil and gas is here to stay, at least for the next 100 years. And this company has a pretty decent history, been around about 40 years. I do rank their free cash flows 2 out of 10, their revenue 2 out of 10, and their ratio 6 out of 10. So let me know what you think, give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.